How many are thankful for the blood of Jesus today? See, that's, uh, that, that's something that's not really talked about very much anymore in the, in the church. And, you know, in, in certain Bibles, we, we remove the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is what we need. The blood of animals was needed in the Old Testament for the high priest to be able to get into the presence of the Holy of Holies. But now we don't. We, we just want to remove all that blood talk from the Bible and, and even from our churches. I played something that was a while ago, uh, yesterday or day before that I saw uh, that, that I saw. You know, one of the big name preachers, big name. Ministries. If I would, if I were to say the big name ministry, you would know what ministry I would be talking about because this person's written a lot of books and talks about your best life now and so on and so forth. His wife gets up there, and this is the, this is like six, seven years ago, and she says she basically says when you come into your worship services, you're coming for yourself. You're not coming for God, you're coming for yourself. And everything that we do as we as, as we offer up praise is just for you. It's not for him, it's just for you. Because God wants you to be happy. I played it and I laughed and because there's Bill Cosby at the end. And he's, Bill Cosby says, you know, one of the TV shows, The Cosby Show. I remember The Cosby Show. He, he said he said in one of those episodes, and they tagged it on the, at the end of this, he said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Because there is no scripture that. But I, I say all that to say that we want to remove all of these things that, that make us feel bad, the conviction. We want to remove the conviction from church today. We want to remove conviction because we don't want to feel bad about the things that we've done. Kylie, go ahead. Kylie, go ahead. Put that up there, honey. She didn't follow my instruction very well this morning. She 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 had to be tested this one. Yes, never mind. <laughs> but we see we I mean this this is what's going on in the church today and, and, and in the world today. Nobody wants to be made to feel bad about the things that you've done. No, the video, honey, the video, the YouTube video. She'll get with me here in a minute. But you see, we, we, we don't want to feel bad. We, we don't want to remember. Why Jesus died for us. And so let's, she's got this video. It's a really cute video. Go ahead and play the video. Daddy's all over here. Hey, hey, come here. Come here, Mama. Come here, Mama. Hey, hey, do the level up. Hey, my homework. Hey, you hey. missed me. How you doing, homework? Come here. Come here. Hey, you have a good day? Come here. You have a good day? Did you have a good day? Come here, Missy. Did you have a good day? Huh? Did you have a good day? Hey, Lucy, you have a day? What are we talking about pants up, though? Oh, y'all want to talk about it? Y'all want to talk about it? Come here. Come here. Come here, my girl. Hello, baby. You had a good day? You had a good day, Daddy? Lucy, you had a good day? Wait, who tore my pants up? Oh, y'all want to talk about that? Okay. Okay. See, so as a cute little video, right? Video and, and dogs are so funny. Do dogs are great. I, I love dogs. You guys know I love dogs. I have four of them. The funny thing is, these big bad pit bulls, they can be so happy to see me when we get home. And when there's a mess made in the floor, we look at that and say, Look at all of them and say, Did you do that? Did you do that? And they do the exact same thing. They they tuck their tail and turn the other way and they, and they, and they want to get away from it. They don't want to discuss what, to what has happened and what we as a family are seeing. That's the mess they made. They don't want to talk about it. But this is how it is for us, isn't it? We mess up. We don't want to talk about it. We make mistakes. We don't want to talk about it. We do things that are against God's word. And we don't want him to bring that up to us. We don't want him to talk about that with us. We kind of just want to walk away and we just want to be happy to see God, right? That's that, that that's really what happens. And so today, as we as we discuss our mirror series, and I'll put a mirror back over here because this is this is important for us to understand. We have to honestly look at ourselves through the mirror of the Holy Spirit. 
We have to look at ourselves honestly in the mirror of the Holy Spirit to see us, ourselves, as how God sees us. And so what does the Bible say about that today? Well, let's go ahead and... What, is my clicker back there? I don't have my clicker. If not, you're going to have to help me. I don't see it. Praise the Lord. I should have looked for it earlier. But anyway, but, but we're coming out of 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, and we're going to be talking, and we're going to be talking through verses 5 through 10 today. And we're going to see exactly what it is that the Word of God tells us and how we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. We're going to be talking about a very uncomfortable subject today. We're going to be talking about a very uncomfortable subject. And look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to talk about it? Are you ready to talk about it? Because we're going to be talking about something nobody wants to discuss. We don't want to discuss these things in our lives. We don't want to discuss them in church. You come to church basically because we want to feel good. We want to walk out of here feeling good about ourselves. That's what we want. That's what we expect now. But we're going to be talking about a very uncomfortable subject today. So in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 10, let me, tell, let, let me read through verses 5 through 7 first, but we'll, and we'll talk about the rest of it later. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light and there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness, we are lying and are not practicing the truth. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Now, when we look at this, and you, and you understand, this is not necessarily Jesus talking, but Jesus is the word, right? There's people that want to say Jesus is just a history book or... Uh, as a matter of fact, just I, I found some other. I was looking through a lot of stuff this weekend, and and several years ago, I, I believe I talked about it here. The uh, I believe it was GQ magazine actually listed the Bible as a book not even worth reading anymore. But we know that Jesus is the Word, right? And and, and the Word of God it brings life. The Word of God reproves. The Word of God corrects. The Word of God instructs us. The Word of God hurts sometimes. And see, and for the, the, the what what is kind of a uh, kind of a just a, 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 a known thing here. When you see God is light, replace that with God is holy. This is something we don't discuss very much anymore. The holiness of God. God is holy, and that holiness is represented by the light here. God is light. In light, there is no darkness. Crazy, isn't it? it? Yeah, have you ever been in a room totally black, totally dark? You can't see your way through, right? But the minute somebody lights a, the smallest match, what happens? You're light when, when you're standing there in darkness. When somebody lights a match, your eyes go directly to that light, don't they? And it's no longer dark because there's that light. God is light. God is holy. In God, there is no darkness. Darkness here is meaning there is no sin. Oh, I know. This is, see, I told you this is a, this is one of those this is one of those things we don't want to talk about today. We don't we don't like to talk about our sin. I did. I used the S word. It's not the it's not the shipping high in transit word. It's the other word, the sin word. We don't like to talk about that. We don't like to talk about the things that we have done wrong. But when we get in the presence of a holy and righteous God, we see ourselves through his eyes. Because that light reveals all darkness in us. And if we've got darkness in ourselves, ooh, we either have to remove that darkness, that sin, or we cannot be in fellowship with him. Oh, wait now. I thought this, I told you it's going to be an uncomfortable subject we're talking about today because we don't discuss this 
much anymore. See, let, 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 let me let, let me read what First Peter says. First Peter, First Peter, chapter chapter one, verses fourteen through sixteen. Peter tells us this: as obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance, but as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. See, we don't, holiness, we, we that, that ranks up there with sanctification, the other S word that we, that, that we talk about in church, or we should be. Sanctification is a process. We're not perfect. How many have, have, have your, I know I keep asking this, but how many have your, have your glorified body today? Nobody, because, <laughs> no, I, I don't either. Don't worry, I don't either. So that means if, you, if you're still sitting here today, that means you're not walking with Jesus in heaven today, right? That means you're still living in this world, right? And that means you are still living in your carnal nature that you fight against every day. This carnal nature that's in us is the former ignorance. We know better. How many have done something this week that you knew better and you shouldn't have done? <laughs> okay, so in other words, you didn't, you didn't pull off perfection this week. Neither did I. That means there's no Jesus Juniors in here this week either, right? That former ignorance. We know what we're supposed to be doing and yet we fight against that carnal nature. That's in us. And we must beat down that carnal nature if we want to have fellowship with the holiest of holy God. Because he calls us into holiness. Be holy for I am holy. Peter is quoting out of Leviticus here. So. For all those, for all those people say, oh, well, we don't need to live, we don't need to worry about the God of the Old Testament, because that was different. We need to worry about God is love, God is love, God is love. That's all we need to worry about. Jesus was a good man. Well, you know what? He was. And he is still God. And the God of the New Testament is the same God that was in the Old Testament. And Jesus brought the new, brought the Old Testament into the New Testament by quoting the but by quoting from the Ten Commandments. And Paul brings the Old Testament into the New Testament as he quotes from from all kinds of scriptures in the Old Testament. Peter brings the Old Testament to the New Testament, saying that we need to be holy because God is. Holy. We've got to be holy. If we want to have fellowship with God, we've got to be holy. And the only way that we can be made holy, we can be made righteous, is through the blood that we just got done singing about. See, we, we, we cannot be in fellowship with God without that blood of Jesus. We cannot be in fellowship with God if we're walking in disobedience. We cannot be in fellowship with God if we're walking in rebellion. We cannot be walking with God if we're... I thought you were going to mention all the other big sins. No, I'm, I'm talking about the stuff that we all struggle with. See, the pursuit of God means that we are pursuing holiness. We've got to be in a pursuit after God. Everybody in here confessed that you're not in heaven, right? So that means if you want to walk with God, you've got to walk in holiness. You've got to walk sanctification out every day. It's a lifelong process. It's not just a once and done thing. You don't just say a prayer when you're five years old and think you can live however you want to the rest of your life and think you're still going to be walking with God at the end of this thing. You have to walk it out. You have to walk it out. That's called sanctification. Sanctification is a lifelong process. And we've got to walk it out. 
See, I, I consider doing Amazing Grace. How many how many know the song Amazing Grace? It's an old hymn, right? One of the most famous hymns out there, right? Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a what? A wretch like me. When we say that, how many know what wretch actually means? How many know what wretched means? We say these things, we sing these things, one of the most famous hymns out there, right? You can ask, you can go ask a drunk on a bar stool and he can sing you Amazing Grace. But how many do we actually know what we're saying? Like, how many knew all those verses were in nothing but the blood of Jesus? We pick a couple of verses out, right? And we sing a couple of verses. But the whole song is, is so phenomenal and so fantastic, I wanted to do the whole thing. Ama amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a what? Like me. What is a wretch? What is a wretch? What is wretched? What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Somebody asked me that. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Wretched. I looked it up in the dictionary. I went to my Greek and Hebrew and, 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 and looked at that, but then I went to the dictionary and, and wretched. W-R-E-T-C-H-E-D means, this is what it means, extremely or deplorably bad or distressing. How many, how many would be honest and say that was me? And how many would say that there are times when I still struggle with that wretched... <laughs> that was us. Do you understand why Jesus now had to give his life? Because in God, there we, we cannot be part of him if we're not walking in holiness. If we're not walking in holiness, we cannot be in fellowship with God. If we are wretched, if we are extremely or deplorably bad or distressing, we cannot be in God's presence. We can't. Why? Be holy. Because I am holy. The only thing that can get us there is the blood of Jesus. See, Isaiah told us that our rich. Does anybody know what Isaiah said? What does Isaiah call our righteousness? Filthy rags. Do you guys understand what he's talking about there? How many know what he's actually talking about? She knows where I'm going with this because we've discussed this. The filthy rag that he is talking about is the rag that the woman would use on her menstrual cycle. That is the that is the filthiness he is talking about. How many want to pick one of those up and just start washing off with it? <laughs> We're not going to go. We, we, we won't go nasty, okay? But I mean, seriously, that that's what they're talking about. Our righteousness is as filthy rags like that. That's our righteousness. I mean, I mean, when you look at it, the writer of Hebrews calls King Jesus the king of righteousness. The king of righteousness. Not just our righteousness. He is the king of righteousness. He is above all other righteousness. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the king of righteousness. See, Jesus even goes... Jesus, let's let, 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 everybody remember the rich young ruler. I'm going to remember the rich young ruler. He is having an encounter with this rich young ruler, right? Jesus is talking to this guy, and he's a rich and, and Jesus, and he, and he has a question for Jesus: What do I do to do to What do I need to do to inherit heaven, right? Jesus looks at him and says, "Well, you got to you got to keep your commandments. You got to do this. You got to. I'm good. I am golden." Right? It's what he thought. I am, what was, what was the term John used to use? Gucci? I'm Gucci. It's what John used to use, my son. It's what he used to use when he was, you know, when he was in high school. I'm Gucci, which meant, which meant he's really good. Right? The rich young ruler thought, I'm good, I'm good. Then Jesus continues on and says, wait a minute. Now listen to me. You've kept all of those things. That's great. Go sell everything you have and then follow me. Whoa. Whoa. 
Did it, did, now, now, just to make sure we're all on the same page, did this rich young ruler do what Jesus said? What does the Bible say he did? He turned, and actually, he, he turned his head, walked away, but it doesn't, it, it means more than that. It says that his countenance fell. Oh, and I have so much. See, Jesus said in this encounter with him, Jesus said, why do you call me good? There is no one good except God. That was at the very beginning of there is no one good except God. So that means that you're not good. You're not good. You're not good. I'm not good. Nobody in this planet is good except God. That's not being holy. In other words, God is the only one that's holy. See, we need Jesus. We need Jesus to be that Savior. We need Jesus to get us into God's presence. We need Jesus to help us. We need Jesus to save us. There is nothing that you can do. There is nothing that I can do. There is no work, no action, no deed. There is nothing that we can do to work our way into God's presence. It is only one way that you get there, and it is through the blood of Jesus Christ. It is by the sacrifice that he made for you and for me. So look at somebody and say, are you ready to talk about it? Are you ready to talk about it? Because we're going to continue on. We're going to continue talking about it. In 1 John 1, 8 and 9. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. She's going to help me out today. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. This is what, this is what John says. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many can quote verse 9? I can. I can quote verse 9, but we forget verse 8, don't we? See, that's, we have to be careful how we, how we pick and choose the scriptures. Because verse 8 is very important. If we say we have no sin, we're lying to ourselves. We're deceiving ourselves. If you say that you that you can make it into heaven by yourself, you're deceiving yourself. If you say that you've been coming to church for 35 years and you're good to go, you don't have to work anymore, you're deceiving yourself. If you say that you don't need to go to the altar because you've got everything under control, you're deceiving yourself. Who was the, who was the first person to make an altar? Was it a sinner or was it one that we consider righteous? Everybody remember? Abraham. Abram. What is he known for? And what does the Bible actually say that he was made righteous by? Anybody know? His faith. Remember? He is the, he, he's known for his faith. But yet he is the first one that we see building an altar. This is before the temple ever came. This is before Moses ever came and gave the instructions for worship. This is before this is before all of the temples that, 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 that have been created were built. This is before all of that. You see him building an altar. The righteous need to go to the altar often. We, as the righteous elect of God... We have to go to the altar. Why? Because we must admit when we have failed. We must admit that we are dirty. If you don't do anything wrong today, but you still live in the world, the world's corruption is getting on you. You know, you know we've talked about it several times. Many have kids that have gone outside to play, or you have gone outside. You just took a shower. I remember Florida. Florida's awful. Florida, you, you would take a shower, step outside, and this is in a winter time, okay? This is winter. Step outside, the humidity is so bad, and, and, and it's so hot, you start breaking out the sweat like within five minutes, and all of a sudden you feel like you need to go take a shower again. 
But we do that with our kids, right? We send our kids outside to play. They come inside. They were clean before they went out there. They're not really done anything dirty. But, you, but, but how many have ever made the statement, you smell like outside. Go take a shower. Right? That is what we're talking about. You can be perfect all day long, but you're living in this world. You have a phone that you carry in your pocket, your purse. You check often. There's a lot of bad stuff on that. You watch TV. I mean, it's just the way it is. You get contaminated by this world. And so if you were perfect all day long, you still need to go to God. You still, the righteous must seek God's face. And come to him and say, Lord, I don't want anything there. I don't want there to be anything in me that's unholy. I need you. I want to be holy like you. Sanctify me right now. Gonna cover me with the blood of Jesus all over again. This is what we have to do. Because if we want to have a relationship with God, fellowship, not just relationship, fellowship with God. You have to confess your sins. You have to admit it. So first we see that God is holy. And in that holiness, we see ourselves for who we are. And then we've got to admit it. We've got to admit our failures. We've got to admit what it is that we've done. You know, in every recovery group that's out there, drugs, alcohol, every recovery group, the, there's one step that everybody has to complete. You have to get through this first step. And that's admitting what you've done wrong. I went to, I went to um, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, the alcoholrehab.com. Okay, this is, and I know there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of discussion right now about what we call stuff. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. But, but let, go ahead and pull that up. I've got, I've got what it says on here. Kylie, go ahead and excuse me. There you go. Okay. Now, see, now, now this is from, again, alcohol, alcoholrehab.com. No journey in life can begin without first, making, without first making a first step. It is this that puts things into motion. In the case of addiction recovery, the first step is always going to be admitting that there is a problem. This is because it is denial of the situation that keeps people trapped indefinitely. Even those individuals who do not subscribe to the Alcoholics Anonymous philosophy will still need to take this important first step. While people are trapped in their denial, they will not be able to develop the motivation to stop their behavior. Alcohol rehab. Dot com. You notice what I've highlighted there in yellow, right? It says this is because it is denial of the situation that keeps people trapped indefinitely. If you don't admit your sin, if you don't confess your sin, you can never read verse 9. He is faithful and just to forgive. If, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? That's what verse 9 said. But the first part of that, we want to skip over the first part. We don't want to confess anything. We just want, to, we just want him to hear our prayers. We just want him to forgive us. See, what happens is we, 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 we totally... Just blow over our condition. Remember, you're wretched. You're rich. It is only by the blood of Jesus that you're here today. You're a wretch. Without Jesus, you are a wreck. You are a wreck. The problem is sin. The problem is that we can fill in here is sin. The problem is sin. Adam brought sin into the world. That's where everything started to go haywire because of Adam. Adam brought sin into the world. 
And because of that sin, we all suffer that same disease. If you want to call it a disease, fine, we can call it a disease, but the disease is not alcohol. The disease is not drug addiction. The disease is sin. That is the problem. That is the disease. It is not anything else other than sin. Admitting your sin is the only way you can get forgiveness of those sins. Romans tells us that each person, every individual has fallen short of the glory of God. Each person, each individual has sin. There, the, the Jesus is the only one that was perfect. And there's no Jesus juniors in this place today or online. We like to think so. We like to think that we walk around in this life and our poop don't stink, right? Let's just be real. We like to think our poop don't stink because, you know, we got it going on. Do we? See, sin is the root of this issue of everything that's gone wrong. Sin. Everything is just a sin. Any, any, everything, that we, everything that we have is just a symptom of that sin. See, we all have this disease. Sin is the disease. It is the disease that we're talking about. Addiction to alcohol is sin. Addiction to drugs is sin. Addiction to shopping is sin. Oh, you didn't know I was going to get all down in your business today, didn't you? Addiction to food is sin. Addiction to power, authority, that's sin. Greed is sin. Pride is sin. Oh, wait now, Pastor. You're getting all you're getting all messed up. You're getting me all messed up now. I, how about say okay, this, this one we all know. Sexual immorality is sin. Doesn't matter what it is, homosexuality, adultery, the you, you want to you, you you find goats attractive, whatever. It's all sin. It's all sin. It's a, that is a symptom of the disease. Sin is the disease that we've got to eradicate in our lives. We must be holy as God is holy. We must recognize our addictions that are sinful. The only addiction that we need is to be addicted to Jesus. Thank you, Carmen. I don't know if y'all remember addicted to Jesus. A2J. That was actually what well, that was actually the, the name of my drama group. But A2J addicted to Jesus. It's a carpet song back in the day. See, this is this is what we've got to understand. Sin is the disease, and we've got to call it what it is. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's not a squirrel. Right? It, 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 I guarantee you it's not a mosquito. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then what is it? It's got to be a duck. Sin, we have to call it, and I know, listen, I know that this world is wanting to rename everything. It's wanting to rename everything. It's wanting to call addiction disease. No, addiction is sin. It's sinful choices that you make. You may not intend to be like that. You may not intend to take the first drink of alcohol. That's your coping mechanism. It's sin. You're never going to get complete deliverance. You're never going to get complete, a complete forgiveness if you don't call it for what it is. Forgive me of my sins. David prayed that. Forgive me of the sins I know about. And then David went even further and said, forgive me for the sins that I don't know about that I've committed. Right? That's what, that's what David did. David taught us. That's in the Old Testament, y'all, just in case you didn't know that. That's in the book of Psalms, in case you didn't know that. See, sin is the disease, and we've got to, we can't rename it. We, we, we've got to come up front with it. We've got to look in the mirror. We've got to look in the mirror of the Holy Spirit and let Him reveal to us what is unholy in our life. 
not what we think. You need to check that at the door when you come into God's presence. You need to check that at the door because when you come into God's presence, you're not there on your own merits. You're not there on your own opinion. You are there in the presence of a holy and righteous God listening to what he has to say about you. And you have to listen honestly. Don't try to hide stuff. See, I have masks, and all my family has masks, and, and the rubber bands are so old, they, they, they broke. But this is what we like to do. We like to put this mask on. We do it every, every Sunday, every Wednesday, whenever we come to church, we like to put a mask on to make it look like we got everything under control, right? This is what we do. The problem is, we do this when we go into God's presence. We try to hide stuff. We don't want God to reveal things to us. We don't want to talk about what's wrong with us. We only want God to tell us what's good, right? We only want to claim, claim, claim scriptures like you know, goodness and mercy will chase me down all the rest of my life. We only want to quote those kind of things, right? We don't want to talk about what's underneath the mask. We don't want to uncover this because we know what's there. The thing is, you can put a mask on all day long and God still sees what you are. He still sees it. He still sees the prideful attitudes that we have. He still sees the, 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 the greed that we operate with. He still sees all of these things. All those hidden things that we think we've got under control and nobody else knows about, God knows. God knows. And so I'm going to take my mask off. And I'm going to do something. I debated whether or not I was going to do it. The Spirit is prompting me to go ahead and do this. Bob, can you come here? See, I had a weak moment Friday. He doesn't know, nobody else needs to know this. And I debate, this is why I debate on whether or not to do it. But I want you to know, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? You caught me at a weak moment. And I reacted badly. That's all right. See, that's what it's all about. Because the Bible says to confess our sins to one another. He says to confess our sins to one another. Look at James 5.16. Kind of pull that up there. It's, it, it, we, we don't like to do this anymore because we're afraid people are going to talk about us. Well, that's why I just brought it all out here. I'm the pastor. I failed one of my council members, and, and I had to apologize to him. I had to repent for what I did. See, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Don't get on the phone and talk to people about what you, what you found out. Don't get on the phone and say, hey, let me tell you what this juicy, as Katie says, this juicy information that I've got about my pastor. Check this out, right? It says we are to pray for one another. I'm human just like everybody else, and I need prayers because I mess up. I mess up. And, and sometimes you catch me in a human moment. I'm sorry. I, I, I wish I could do away with this humanness, but I just can't. But it says we are to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another so that why? We may be healed. See, we like to quote this last part, but we forget the first part. The prayer of a righteous man is very powerful in its effect. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We like to quote that part, don't we? But we don't like to quote that first part. This is what I'm saying. If you're going to pull something out and quote it, you need to pull the whole thing out in context. 
and understand what you're saying. We need to confess our sins. This doesn't mean you need to go. You, 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 we, we need to go to a priest and confess everything that we've done. Come on now, let's be real. But like in this instance, I, I, I offended him. And I and with this, I had it was, it was just, a, it just so happy we were talking about all this. And that was going to be a, a, a perfect example. If you know there's sin, especially between you and somebody else, man, you need to confess it and you need to pray for one another. And you need to get that under the blood. Amen? I know this is hard, isn't it? This is a hard word today. See... If we want to grow closer to God, we've got to obey the word of God. The rich young ruler heard the word of Jesus, right? Go and he's not going to make this requirement out of everybody. With, with you, it's, it could be, hey, stop watching so much TV and spend time with me. Hey, push back the plate once in a while and, and, and spend that time with me. We often used to push the plate back, right? It's different for each individual, but he looked at the rich young ruler and told him exactly what, he, what, what to do if he wanted to really be in fellowship with Jesus. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. He didn't. He walked away. We don't know if that young man ever made a mess with Jesus. I would like to think he did, but we don't know. See, we've got to talk about this, not with each other. We, man, we've got to talk about this with God. We've got to talk about, we've got to repent of our sins. We've got to repent of our sins. We have to. So look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to talk about it? Are you ready to talk about it? Not with me, but with God. Are you ready to talk about it? See, there, there is some, in, 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 in this climate that we have, there is something that happened in 19, I think, 97 with our denomination. Our denomination as a whole repented of the sin of racism. Our denomination as a whole came together and repented of that sin because we recognized, hey, we had we had we had this denomination. We had people in our denomination who were racist, and and and, and some of the things that were talked about were racist. And so we repented that we did that as a denomination. That's what's important: repenting of our sins. And and I'm going to say, racism is a sin on both sides, on every side. It doesn't matter. I just, I just finished reading a book from Ken Ham that's fantastic. It doesn't matter the color of our skin. As a matter of fact, that's the diversity that's in this world. God put it there. He put it there. It doesn't matter our skin color. It doesn't matter where we grew up. It doesn't matter. We are one race and one blood. One race and one blood. Maybe that's something you struggle with. Maybe. I don't know. I can't, I can't say. But it's time to stop fooling ourselves and take our mask off. Because God sees. God knows. In, in 1 John chapter, chapter 1, verse 10, pull that up, kind of. 1 John chapter 1, verse 10. John concludes this section and says, If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. We make who a liar? We make God a liar. Do you understand what, you're, what that's saying? If you say you have no sin and you're perfect and you and you got your stuff together and you don't need Jesus, you have sinned. I mean, you're making, making, you are not calling, but you are making God a liar. And there is no lie in God. God is not a liar. He is not a man that, that his word changes. But we are making him a liar if we say we have no sin in us and we don't need Jesus. I don't need to go to the altar today. I'm good. Really? What about yesterday? Oh, what must I have was the past? Let's, let's take a look at that. Yeah, we do. Because I've said it before and I keep saying that God is not going to bless you or me past our last act of disobedience. 
But there is no but. He is not going, he's not, he's not obligated to hear us. Past our last act of disobedience, past our last act, let's just be real, sin. See, to be closer to God, we have to remove the mask that we wear. To be closer to Him, we've got to take it all off. To be closer to Him, we've just got to bear ourselves out. Not try to hide anything from Him because He knows it anyway. He knows you better than you know you. He knows. Anybody remember the BTK killer? Anybody remember him? He was the dude that killed people through bondage, torture, and over decades. We're not talking just a couple years, we're talking decades. And he was able to hide it from his wife, his church. Matter of fact, he even had a dead body when he went to his church for a meeting. He was able to hide it. Eventually, it was found out. God knew. God knew the evil that was in him. And God can still save that man. But I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just making you realize, you know, the truth is going to come out eventually. The truth about the things you try to hide will come out eventually. The Bible says that, 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 that if we hide stuff, God's going to bring it into the light because he is light, right? He's going to bring it to light and let everybody know what you're going on unless you get it, repent, unless you repent and get it taken care of. That's the key. See, in James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. Let me read that real quick. James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. We can all quote part of this, at least. Therefore, we don't like to talk about this part. Submit to God. Submit yourselves to God. We don't like to talk about that part. We don't want to submit to anybody. So we kind of glaze over that. Resist the devil and he will flee. How many have ever said that? But how many have ever said submit to God first? As you're saying that. Oh, wait a minute. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay, so there, there, there's a formula there. You see it, right? If you want the devil to flee from you, you've got to submit first to God. Okay? And then James goes on to tell us, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. You who? He's talking not to the Gentiles. He's talking to the church. He is talking to the church that would read this letter. He is not talking to the Romans. He is not talking to the Philippians. He is not talking to the Greeks, the Gentiles. He's not talking to any of those people. He is talking to God's church. Draw close to God. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hands, you double-minded. Does that sound like this is a positive word here? <laughs> you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep over what? Your sin. Let laughter, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Over what? Your sin. Your wretched condition. He goes on to say then, humble yourselves before God and he will exalt you. So there's a formula there. If you want to draw close to God, you've got to submit to him. If you want to keep getting close to God, you've got to cleanse your hands. You've got to purify your mind. You've got to mourn over your sins. You've got to let, you've got to let that laughter be turned into mourning over what you've done wrong. And then he's not done. He says, humble yourself before God and he will exalt you. That runs contrary to what we're told in this word today, doesn't it? That runs contrary to what the world, the media wants to tell us, doesn't it? Well, I, I've got more because James goes on to say later on in verse 17. Pull it up, cousin. Verse 17, James goes on to say, So it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. If you're wondering what sin is, James just broadened it out for you. It is sin to know to do good and then choose not to do it. That's what James says. You're not arguing with me. You're arguing with the word of God. 
If you have, if you don't like this, I didn't. I don't like it either. You mean the Spirit of God speaks to me about giving a homeless man a couple of bucks in Atlanta, Georgia? You mean I have to do it? If the Spirit of God, I'm going to tell you, the Spirit of God is the one who's going to prompt you to do good. Okay. If you are, if you refuse to do that good, if you, if the spirit of God begins to prompt you and tell you, Hey, do this for that person. And you choose not to do it. Guess what you just did. Somebody tell me what you just did. You sin. Listen, the, the devil's never going to tell you to do good. I won't tell you that right now. He is never going to tell you to do good. How do I know if it's from God? Well, if it's going to lift somebody up, if it's going to if it's going to exhort somebody, if it's going to make somebody feel good, I guarantee you that's not the devil speaking. For you to know to do good and you choose not to do it, that is sin. hard, isn't it? See, we've got to be ready to confess our sins. We have to. We have to be ready to confess anything that we've done wrong, anything that doesn't look like Jesus, anything, anything that runs contrary to God's word. Anything runs contrary to God's word. We've got to repent. Attitudes, words, judgmental attitudes. I don't, we, we, we shouldn't be telling people our opinion. We should be telling them what God's word says, not our opinion. My opinion, I think anyone who owns a snake should die and go to hell. <laughs> it's my opinion. <laughs> That's not what God's word says. I hate snakes, okay? So that's just, you know, I'm not coming. If you have a snake, I'm not coming to your house. Bob has tried to get me to go home rattlesnake hunt with him in Texas for ever since I've been here, and I'm not doing it. The way it goes for me, I'll miss. I'll just make that thing mad, and it'll come after me. That's all. My kids come home and say, I want scorpions. I want I want a lizard. I want a snake. I'm like, you know, you, I'm fine. You do. Wait till you get out of my house, but if you don't want daddy to come see you, you do all that. I'm not coming to your house. <laughs> no. Well, a good snake is a dead snake. But, I mean, seriously, our opinions don't matter. Your opinion does not matter. God's opinion is the only opinion that matters. What is his opinion of you today? What is God's opinion? Of what, what is God saying about you today as you look? In the mirror, as you look in the mirror of your life through God's eyes, what is God saying about you? What is God showing you in this mirror? Remember, he said, be holy, for I am holy. God is holy. Remember, if we want to be holy, we have to admit it. We have to admit our shortcomings. We have to admit our failures. We have to admit when we have sinned, we have to confess those sins. And then, after all that, we, we, we have to be honest with ourselves. We've got to, we seriously have to talk about it. We seriously have to confess it. We seriously need to take our mask off. Because whatever you're hiding, God sees it. You know, I, I, I was a youth pastor. So, you know, my blunt talk comes from me being a youth pastor. Because you got to be blunt with these kids. You have to you have to watch your words. I'm, 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 I'm again learning this as we have these teenagers in our house. They like to split hairs with me. They like to split, uh, they, they, they like to talk about syntax. Not what I not what I mean, but what, what I said. They they like to uh, they like to as, as the old saying goes, they like to split a frog here three ways, right? But we like to do that with God too. 
my blunt talk, I would I would look at these young people. I would say, God knows what you did in the backseat of that car last week. He knows what you did. He knows what you've been smoking. He knows what you've been drinking. He knows where you've been. He knows where you've been hanging out. He knows he knows the nasty words that are coming out of your mouth. Thankfully, now we have we have Instagram and we have Snapchat and we can look at everything they say now, right? They can't deny it. You know, I got one of them over there that took a picture last school year and, and we called her on it. It's like, what, what you doing here? I'm not gonna tell you. Don't worry. I'm gonna say what it is. I'm not gonna say who it was. You know, it's one of four, right? <laughs> one of three, because I said her. But this is what we, you have to be honest and you have to be taught. You have to be real with God. You have to ask the Spirit of God, what is in me that is not like Jesus? I want to be holy as you are holy. I want to be righteous. And the only way I can be righteous is to have that blood of Jesus cover me. The only way I can be righteous in your sight and have a right relationship with you, a right fellowship with you, is that I am holy. something that when you, when you just say that word holy you realize this is all that the seraphims fly around heaven and say holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And if you want to see him face to face someday, you've got to be holy. Because he told Moses, no man can look on my face and live. That is true, still true today. No one can look on the holiness and the glory of God without something dying. Jesus died to make that possible for us. But as we get in there, we realize. That's when you really begin to realize there is still something that has to die. And that is your old self. Paul said, for I am crucified with Christ and yet I live. That old nature has to be nailed on the cross. So every head, every head bowed, every eye closed. This is serious, man. This is serious. And if you want, if you want to be in the presence of God, if you truly want to draw near to Him, you have to look honestly about yourself. You've got to look honestly. So I, that's what I want everybody doing here right now. This is your time to ask the Spirit of God, "What is in me that is not pleasing to You? What is in me that I need to get removed? What is in me that I need to have Jesus to come to, to, to the blood of Jesus to cover? What's there? What's not like You? What's un?" Like, what is what is not holy? What is unholy in me right now? That is your responsibility. I cannot do that for you. The Spirit of God has to reveal it to you. So everyone needs to be asking right now, Spirit of the living God, reveal to me anything that is not like you. Reveal to me anything that is not like you because I want to be holy. I want your presence. And in order for me to draw near and to have your presence, I've got to cleanse my hands. I've got to purify my mind. I've got to humble myself before you. What is it? As the Spirit of God begins to speak to you, we don't do this a lot. And as the Spirit of God begins to speak to you, I don't want your hand raised. Because there is an act that has to happen. There is an act. It's not for me and it's not for anybody else in here. But if the Spirit of God speaks to you today, right now, I want you to make your way to this altar. And I want you to begin to confess to Him, not to me. Confess to Him the things that are wrong in your life. Make your way to this altar right now. Don't walk out of here the same way you walked in. If you need to know Jesus as your Savior, this is the time right now. If you need to ask Him into your heart, this is the time right now. Not later. 
right now because the next moment is not promised to us. You can step into eternity and you can wake up and you can find yourself in a devil's hell. Why run that risk? Spirit of God, speak to your people right now. I have delivered what you wanted me to deliver. I have argued with you. I have debated with you. And I have been obedient to you and your word. I have delivered what it is that you wanted me to deliver to this congregation and to the people on Facebook. The people, anyone watching this. And I ask and pray your spirit convict them right now. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, reveal anything in me. Reveal anything in me. 